Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the UK Government's fiscal statement last week. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding Officer, the Chancellor's statement provided little respite for many families who are already facing a winter unable to afford essentials like food and heating their homes. The UK Government needed to use its reserve powers to provide support for those who need it most, but instead we got tax cuts for the rich and not much for anyone else. The Chancellor has taken a huge gamble with the public finances and the health of our economy, and the markets have reacted strongly. The pound fell to record lows on Monday, the cost of government borrowing has risen to its highest level in over a decade, and investor confidence is plummeting. Many householders are now going to face much higher mortgage costs as a consequence of these decisions. We are doing everything within our power to support people, public services and the economy, but these efforts are under threat by a UK government beginning a new and dangerous race to the bottom. That is not a race that we are willing to run. We will not be replicating the Tories' reckless tax cuts, but will consider carefully the correct measures for Scotland. I intend to seek advice from an expert panel specifically convened to consider the implications of the mini-budget and will also embark on discussions with business and trade union interests. The Scottish Fiscal Commission will incorporate the impact of any changes in their next forecasts. I intend to report on these issues to Parliament as part of the emergency budget review in week commencing 24th of October. The damaging impact of the UK Government decisions on Friday demonstrate why Scotland needs the full range of financial powers to avoid living at the mercy of bad decisions taken in Westminster. Emma Roddick. I, I thank the Deputy First Minister for that very reassuring answer. Um, households across Scotland are facing very real financial pressures right now due to the rising cost of living. The Joseph Rowntree Foundation has said the mini-budget willfully ignored families struggling through a cost of living emergency and instead targeted its action on the richest. Does the Deputy First Minister think that letting the ultra-wealthy keep more of their money during a cost of living crisis should be any government's priority? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I don't think that should be the case. Uh, the UK Government is pinning all of its hope on a, a discredited approach to trickle-down economics benefiting higher earners as opposed to those most in need now, which should be the priority of the United Kingdom government. Um, against a backdrop of political instability at the UK level, we will continue to take a responsible approach to tax policy, building on our fair and progressive approach to taxation, which has protected low earners while raising additional revenue for public services. Um, I can assure the Chamber that the Scottish Government will take sensible, careful decisions that are about helping those who need that assistance the most. Emma Roddick. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Time and time again, almost every decision the UK Government makes continues to drag Scotland down a path that its voters have explicitly made clear they do not want. Does the Deputy First Minister agree that it's clearer than ever that it is only with the powers of independence that we can deliver on the priorities of people in Scotland and build a fairer economy for all? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I, I do agree with Emma Roddick on that point. And I think what was very clear from the mini-budget on Friday was the dramatically different direction the United Kingdom government now wishes to take United Kingdom policy in contrast to the prevailing democratic decisions that have been arrived at in this chamber and uh, which of course is a product of the choices made by the people of Scotland. Now of course these two um, factors are not um, in any way separate because the implications of the UK government's decisions on Friday will be felt acutely on the Scottish, uh, the Scottish Government and on the Scottish public finances. I would have thought in a mini-budget, at a time of a cost of living crisis, the priority would have been to support the most vulnerable and to ensure that public expenditure was boosted to cope with the raging levels of inflation that are undermining the value of, the, of public expenditure. None of that happened on Friday. And indeed, my concern looking at the publications from the United Kingdom government and their statements is that the pressure on public expenditure in the years to come is going to become even more intense than what I set out to Parliament in my statement two weeks past Wednesday. Douglas Lumsden. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, you said that you would reflect carefully on UK government tax cuts following the announcement of the mini-budget last week, but today you seem to have already ruled that out. 
Some of the Scottish Government's former economic advisers warned that Scotland cannot afford to fall further behind the rest of the UK in the tax gap. So why will you not ensure that tax cuts are passed on, but not to the rich, but to our doctors, nurses, teachers and police who face being taxed more during the cost of living crisis than their colleagues in the rest of the UK? Cabinet Secretary. Mr Lumsden has to work out what it is he's actually arguing for, because he said in his statement that I was, I assume from what he said, that he wants me to replicate in its entirety what the UK Government has set out. If that was the case, I would be taking decisions to reward the already very, very wealthy with significant tax cuts. So that, uh, that is the reality of what Mr Lumsden is asking me to do. Now, I am going, now Mr Lumsden is saying from a sedentary position that is not what he asked for. Well, I have read numerous comments from the Conservatives demanding that I just get on and do what the United Kingdom Government has done. And I'm going to consider it all carefully. That's why I'm going to take the necessary time to do it. While well, I'm going to uh, draw together an expert panel to provide advice to the government. It's why I'm going to engage with business. It's why I'm going to engage with trade union interests. Because I don't think any of us should underestimate the scale of disruption and damage that was done by the announcements on Friday. Very damaging. And I have to take a careful and prudential approach in managing the public finances of Scotland, and that is what I'm going to do. And Mr Lumsden, his colleagues can engage in sound bites, but I'll, I, will, I, will, I will place a, a wager in front of Parliament that at the same time as Mr Lumsden is arguing for tax cuts, he will have colleagues coming to this chamber demanding that I increase public expenditure on other things. Yeah. And those two things cannot be done at the same yeah. time in the fiscal envelope provided by the United yeah, Kingdom yeah, Government. Yeah, yeah. Alex Cole Hamilton. <laughs> Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, Black Wednesday hit almost 30 years ago to the day. It trashed the UK economy and with it any reputation the Conservative Party had for fiscal prudence, making their removal from office almost inevitable. And the parallels, the parallels to this financial crisis we're experiencing now are uncanny. Much has been written in recent months about routes out of the cost of the living emergency, but literally no one was asking who will think of the millionaires. Does the Deputy First Minister agree with me that the UK government must immediately recall Parliament to walk back this mini-budget, re state the top rate of taxation, make energy companies pay their way while delivering relief for struggling families. Cabinet Secretary. I think I, I find myself in the rather unusual position yeah, today yeah. Of, of actually agreeing yeah, with yeah. most of what Mr Cole Hamilton said there, which is a, a, slightly, a, a slightly discombulating situation. But there are serious issues that he raises. Future generations are being lumbered with colossal costs of borrowing because a windfall tax has not been applied to energy companies. Various very wealthy people are being given even more money when people are facing destitution in our society. So I entirely support the call uh, for the United Kingdom Parliament to, to reconvene immediately for these measures to be rectified because the damage to individuals, and we're, we're, we'll be seeing it already, there'll be very disappointed people who expected they were able to be taking the course to uh, to acquire properties and to get their first step on the property ladder, and that will have been taken away from them by the recklessness of the decisions on Friday. So uh, I do hope uh, Mr Cole Hamilton's call uh, for the recall of the United Kingdom Parliament is acceded to, and I would support it.